From failing to make weight for her fights to submitting the most dominant champion in UFC's flyweight division, Alexa Grasso has finally made her mark on MMA's biggest stage, and she won't slow down anytime soon. The Mexican fighter proved her mettle by defeating the long-reigning champion Valentina Shevchenko. She showed the world that the Russian assassin the title. Literally, no one thought that she could win, like not even the most optimistic of pundits, analysts, or bookmakers. But she managed to surprise everyone everyone with her perseverance and technical ability in the octagon. Now she's on a five-fight win streak and the newly crowned queen of the women's flyweight. It's going to come at a cost though, because now everyone wants a crack at her. Well, imagine that, you know, I, I won the most important fight of my life. I, I did everything I had to do to get my hand raised and I knew that I had to finish the fight no matter what. I'll be honest here, guys. I think Shevchenko was a more intimidating fighter than Grasso, so there weren't many challengers willing to go into the cage with her. But Alexa is still kind of green when it comes to the top of the division because she hasn't spent much time up there yet, and the Mexican didn't have the best start to her career either. Having three losses at the beginning of your MMA career is never impressive, but she was competing at strawweight for some reason, and she really, really struggled there. Also, remember, she didn't lose to just anyone. Her career losses came against veteran Felice Herrig, the powerful Tatiana Suarez, and the former two-time strawweight champion Carla Esparza. And against Esparza, she really did put on a show. She took the fight to a decision, and even though she lost, she earned the Fight of the Night award. As a 115-pounder, she was facing a lot of trouble. I mean, in 2017, in her match against Randa Marcos, Grasso was diagnosed with a urinary tract infection. The doctor stopped her from cutting weight, and she was put on antibiotics. But that couldn't hold her down. She went on to fight Marcos at a catch weight of 119 pounds, and even won the fight. She's complete and I'm complete too. The only difference is now I will do everything to win. Oh, what a nice left hook. As good as advertised, Alexa Grasso. I know it's a perfect match for both of us. In 2020, she was scheduled to take on Claudia Gadelia in a strawweight bout, but she missed weight again. As you can guess, the fight was cancelled. Though now, she decided to finally move up to flyweight, which was a wise move, in my opinion. Why put herself at a health risk by cutting down so much weight? I don't know what she was thinking, or what her coaches were telling her, but moving up a weight class is the best thing she's done for her career. Since she's moved up to the flyweight, Alexa looks a lot more at home. She moves really well now and seems to be significantly more powerful powerful than she was in the strawweight. Not to mention, she's been extremely impressive in her recent run. She's had dominant wins against Ji Yeon Kim, Macy Barber, Joanne Wood, and Vivian Araujo. Most of her wins have been via unanimous decisions, but those were all clear wins for her. No one questioned any of them. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen Grasso really being tested. She was far too comfortable in all of her fights and was never in any danger. To me, it looked like she could just set up her strikes whenever she wanted. Araujo probably probably came closest to doing something on the ground, but the Mexican displayed fantastic cardio and effective defensive grappling. And coming in from a history boxing background, this girl's got some impressive striking as well. Her kickboxing's on point, and we saw some of that during her fight with Araujo. Her combinations are fast, and man, her head kicks are just crazy. The best parts, she needs no setup to throw that either. She doesn't switch legs, doesn't give any indication of it, and just takes your head off. That is extremely rare to see in fighters, and she seems to have figured it out pretty well. Some of you might think that her grappling isn't that good, and I would have usually agreed with you. She's a purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu after all, and there are a ton of black belts in the division, but she had no issue with holding her own against Araujo. She pulled guard almost effortlessly against the Brazilian, and eventually she managed to get back on her feet, where she's more comfortable against a more experienced grappler. Also, in her fight against Wood, she managed to submit her via a rear naked choke in just the first round of the match. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Alexa Grasso! 
That just proves how well-rounded of a fighter she is. To top it all off, she has amazing cardio. I mean, she can go five rounds and still look fresh in the final one. Plus, she really prepares for her fights. A lot of the credit for that obviously has to go to her coaches and her training partner. But she executes them perfectly when she has to. Just look at what she did to the bullet. The way she went into the match and the discipline she showed was too impressive. You see, Val throws a lot of spinning attacks. Whether it be the spinning back fist or the spinning kicks. It's just the bread and butter for the former queen of the flyweights. She's dominated challengers before with her explosive striking. But where the rest of Val's opposition was scared of this, Alexa chose to walk into it and make it work in her favor. It was the Russian spinning kick that would spell the end of her reign because it left her exposed for a second and that was all Grasso needed to finish the fight. She sidestepped that kick and as Val's back was turned on her opponent for just a brief moment, the Mexican took her back. In the words of Joe Rogan, Alexa snuck up on her like a ninja, sank in her hooks, forced her to the ground, and submitted her with a rear naked choke. It was so quick that the bullet didn't even see it coming, and before she knew it, her face was changing colors, so she had to tap out. This alone was so impressive that it left the world in a state of shock. To put it in context, just imagine this. Before UFC 285, Val had never been submitted. This wasn't just a fluke by Grasso either. Right after the fight, the Mexican revealed that she'd been practicing for this. She knew what what Val was going to throw and the Mexican prepared for it. That was one of the best back takes I've seen in recent years. Well, we knew that she was going to spin and like I said, it was easier to take the back from that position so I was just waiting for that moment. You all know how good Shevchenko is with her counter-striking. Grasso proved herself to be an excellent striker, and at times, she was even getting the better of the former champ on the feet. That's why, after kind of realizing that she might not be able to match Grasso on her feet, the former champ started scoring takedowns and tried to keep Alexa under her, landing grounded strikes when she could. But she was matched here as well. Yeah, well, I, when I realized that I was uh, touching her with my hands, she changed the strategy. She was taking me to the ground, she's so fast, I was not able to defend, but when I was on the ground, I always told myself, you have to go up again and again and again, and you won't stop until you, go, you get up. And Alexa showed that she wasn't panicking in tough spots. Like, she even shrugged off the crucifix that Val tried, and she left no opening for the former champion to take advantage of. Her overall solid defense kind of made Val panic. That's why the bullet started fighting Alexa in clinches. But once again, she was outmatched there as well. Now this was something that I was really surprised with. Grasso's understanding of over and underhooks must have been surprising to Shevchenko as well, because Alexa landed all of her eight significant strikes from the clinch. Compare that to only two out of seven for the Russian, and striking was only a part of it. Grasso's understanding of the clinch also made sure that she avoided many takedowns, so she basically completely dominated that fight in every aspect. That's why Alexa is the rightful queen of the flyweights. Well, it, it happens um, like pretty often, and I'm happy that people can recognize me. And I always like that people know about me for my dedication, my work, and now for being a champion, imagine that, <laughs> it's great.